The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, uh, we, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and, and we, we tried to stop them because they're not one of our group. Jesus replied, Don't try to prevent them. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is with us and for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to the Christ, amen, I say to you, you will surely not lose your reward. However, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, well, it, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he was thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. And it's better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands and go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two feet and to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes and be thrown into Gehenna where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. If your hand is a cause of scandal, cut it off. If your foot is, tear it apart. If your eye is, pluck it out. Do not, let me repeat, do not take these words literally. You know, the last one to take these words literally was the third century theologian Origen who went into heaven singing soprano. I won't explain it. <laughs> and, and the sad thing is that when we take a fundamentalist approach or a little approach, we miss what's going on because this is the finger pointing to the truth and all we see is, 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 is the finger. I heard on the news the other day, and it was really frightening, that the Taliban is, is reconsidering taking the Quranic law that says if somebody steals, you cut off their hand. That's missing the point. But there is a point. One of the things about the, the Semitic languages and, and Jesus' languages that you overemphasize, you make a hyperbole to make a really strong point, and here's the point. There's a warning. And this is a warning against what what is called, well, we, we, in, in, in our gospel today, it was called causing the little ones to sin. Is it better for a millstone to be put around your neck and drop into the sea than, than escandalon? That's the Greek word. And escandalon basically means, well, our English word is scandal. It basically means that, there, that you put a, a roadblock or a stumbling stone where something has to move. You get in the way of what? We are called to either lead, follow, or get out of the way. And what we're called to get out of the way of is the very Spirit of God, the stuff of God. And, and so he's, he's, he's being as adamant as he possibly can, using as strong language as he possibly can, because, because he wants that spirit to move. He wants everybody to have the spirit, and yet, and yet he's constantly finding, and we're finding, especially in the scriptures today, those who are standing in the way. And so the question is, how do we get out of the way? Now, one thing I want to say about the spirit, well, two things. One is that the spirit will move where the spirit wants to move. She is always on the move. And the Spirit cannot be stopped. End of sentence. The kingdom is coming. We can't stop the Spirit, but we can slow it down. 
We, we can, by our actions, slow it down so that we dam up the flow that God wants to come into this world to bring about the kingdom, to bring about that wonderful omega point where, where the lion lies down with the lamb, where there is no more war, there is no more famine, where there really is the kingdom that Jesus proclaims. That's where the Spirit is moving us. We're going to get there, but oh, how we have slowed it down. And today we've got examples of slowing down the Spirit. And in the first reading today, the, Moses wants to put the Spirit upon all of these elders. They've got a, all of them on the list except for two don't show up, Eldad and Medad. But somehow, even though they're not in the tent, when the Spirit comes down upon them, they begin prophesying too. They begin speaking God's Word. And of course, they report this to Moses. And Moses' is, uh, aide, since he was a little boy, Joshua says, Lord, stop them. Stop them. They weren't where they were supposed to be. They weren't going through the normal channels. They weren't doing it the way we do it. And of course, what is Moses' response? It's beautiful. He says, are you jealous on my account? Oh, would that all of my people were prophets. You see, the Spirit's going to work any way the Spirit wants to work. We want to restrict the Spirit to our way, the only way. It's my way or the highway. Joshua sees that he's not, they're not going to go through the way of Moses, but God is still working. Now, we've got all kinds of wonderful examples of that in the Scriptures, even with Jesus' time. We've got the Holy Spirit working through the centurion who was a pagan. He wasn't Jewish. And the Spirit is so profound in him that when Jesus is going to heal his servant, he says, Don't, the Master doesn't have to come here. Oh, oh, uh, speak but the word and my, my servant. He's not, I'm not worthy to have him in my house. Speak the word, he'll be healed. Jesus saw the Spirit flowing through this pagan, completely outside of Judaism. And he says, I've not found this kind of faith in, in all of you who profess that you are the daughters and sons of God. Or, or, the, or the, the Syrophoenician, the Canaanite woman who confronts Jesus and, and is going to expand his heart by, by one line. Oh, oh, Lord, even the dogs get the scraps that fall from the master's table. And he's undone. Oh, woman, oh, woman, he says. And, and of course, woman is a code word. Woman means, oh, humanity. God has worked through you. The Spirit has flowed through you. And so we find all kinds of, of Spirit-filled people, which brings us to the, to the Gospel, where those who should be Spirit-filled are not necessarily so. But two weeks ago, we, we, we found Peter with, with the height and the loath. The highest is, oh, you are the Son of God. And the lowest is, Oh, may nothing terrible ever happen to you. May, 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 may you, 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 you're supposed to be the Son of God. And how does Jesus respond? He says, get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God thinks, but as human beings think. You are trying to trip me up. You are trying to make the flow stop. You are becoming a stumbling block. Now, last week he went on with that teaching to the disciples. And they're on the their, their road, and on the road they're starting to fight with each other. And what are they fighting about? Which one's the greatest? Which one has the power? Or which one is God's favorite? And, and so he has to bring out his favorite visual aid, a little child, and he says, uh, you're missing the point. Today, it continues. Those who think they've got God in their pocket are going to be uh, disillusioned because the Spirit works where the Spirit wants to work. And so today we've got John coming up to Jesus in the Gospel. He's saying, Lord, we saw people casting out demons in your name, but, but they're not one of us. They're not part of our group. They're, they're, they're not the orthodox ones. So we tried to stop them. We saw the Presbyterians. Yeah. 
casting out demons in your name. The little, little boy says to the little girl, I'm a Presbyterian. The little girl says, I belong to another abomination. <laughs> Jesus says, will you stop it? If they're not against me, they're with me. No one in my name can do anything bad. Let the Spirit flow. Don't sadden the Spirit. Don't muzzle the Spirit. And, and how do you know that the Spirit is flowing? Wherever you see unity, mercy, forgiveness, and the biggie, compassion. Compassion. That's the most godlike quality of all. Wherever you see that, trust it. Trust it. And of course, the question is do we see it today? Do we see it today? And the answer is pretty obvious no, no, we don't. And that's the reason that, that the words that St. James is speaking in the second reading today are just as valid today as they were 2,000 years ago. You, you rich are, are, are feeding off the poor, but your gold is going to tarnish and, and your fine clothes are going to rot. And he goes on to say that this is what you are doing is a scandal. Well, you know what? It is a scandal. Scandalone. It's a scandal that two-thirds of the world are going to go to bed hungry tonight. That people are starving to death. And those who are so few have so much. And those who are so many have so little. That's the fact of the world in which we live today. That is blocking the flow of the Spirit. That is blocking the flow of God's love. So the Spirit's going to work in, in, in many, many different ways through many, many different peoples. This nation, you know, was founded on, on the genocide of two different kinds of groups, and one we thought we would make extinct, but we didn't. But, but, they, but God has worked through them, and we are just learning now what they had to teach. And I'm speaking of the spirituality of the American Indian. When, when, when Pope Francis was here, he, and so John Paul II too, both of them marveled at their spirit. And what, what did their spirit say? That, 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 because we, we always thought that we were the superior beings and everything else is, is, is for us. So we can use the resources of the world any way we want to. Their spirituality said, no, 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 the whole world is sacred. Everything is sacred. That was, that's Franciscan spirituality. That's how Francis saw the world. Brother Sun, Sister Moon, everything was part of God's manifestation. Now, they would never cut down a tree without asking its permission. They would never kill more animals than they needed to survive. Now, they were the original ecologists, and we're just coming to that right now, but we still want to block it. And so the question is, how do we block the Spirit? You know, last uh, Saturday night in this church, I celebrated my 50th anniversary as a priest, and I shared with the people my own blockage, how I found myself getting in the way. You know, I, I, uh, I love to make people feel good and happy, and you know why? Because that makes me feel good and happy. But there was a time when I was teaching in the seminary, uh, about s five or six years after I was ordained, that I, I literally lost my faith. Uh, and and, 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 and I, I can remember going to this chapel at St. Charles Borromeo in Lockport and looking up at the crucifix for nine months and saying, if you're real, I want to know. I want to know. And there was no answer at all until one night on the Feast of St. Joseph, the 19th of March, 1976, at the hands of my own brother, brother Joseph, who knew how to get through my defenses, my persona, because I wanted everybody, well, as he said to me so clearly, he said to you, you know, you will do anything for anybody at any time, but it only gets to you. 
It never gets to the source. And you are tired and you are exhausted and you're losing your faith simply because you think you're in charge, that you can make it better. You've been saying all of your life, love me, love me, love me, love me, love me. Can I tell you something categorically? He looked at me right in the eye and he says, you're loved. You don't need to earn it. You don't need to do a thing for it. It is the gift from God. Now, what are you going to do about it? And then the killer line that literally changed my life. Well, they looked at me and said, when did God retire and you take over? The veil parted. Oh, you can get to God, but you had to go through me. You don't have to go through me. My job is to be a conduit of God's grace, to get out of the way, to allow it to flow. Oh, and from that day to this, it's made all the difference in the world. Oh, I still block it from time to time. You know, the ego is always going to be there. The ego dies about a half hour after the body. But as long as you know you're in the way, you can start to sidestep and get out of the way. Oh, oh, the kingdom is coming. We will not stop the Holy Spirit. The question is, will we facilitate it or slow it down?